this is like a quick crash course into how to size a prop and a little extra. Welcome, this is JT Gatoring. So, normally do a lot of outdoor product review type of stuff. Today is going to be long tail props. I've been messing around with long tails for a little bit. I uh, have a few Facebook groups, everything like that. And um, I thought today I'd go over long tail props. Uh, real quick, before we get started, go ahead and make sure to subscribe if you want more videos like this. And then if you end up liking the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Um, also, comments and Facebook group. That's where all the info is going to be, where the discussions are at. This is just my opinion on it and how I see it. So if you think of it in a different way, then let me know. Put it down in the comments or go visit the chat. Um, this is just how I see it. Maybe right, maybe wrong. But um, if you're looking for more guidance or more uh, information on this, then a good place to go is down to the comments. Another good place is the Facebook group chats or the group pages. And then uh, if you're a Swamp Runner owner, there is the form there too, so you can look up there. But for now, I'm going to try to explain it the best that I can. Props. How to size a prop. And we're going to be talking about mud, mud motors, long tails. So, how to size a prop for a long tail. Alright, so the first thing you get into when you get your long tail mud motor is you need to know your RPMs. And that's how you size your prop. What's your RPMs at? To do that, you need a tachometer. Uh, last time I looked, they're about $25. I'll go ahead and link it down below. I also have lists on Amazon so you can see all the products that I buy. So RPMs tell you the whole story. So we're going to go ahead, look down below, and I'll try to draw a few things out for you. So you have two RPMs. Too high or too low. So if you're too high, then you're governing out. When you're governing out, so let's go RPMs. RPMs too high. That means that that prop is spinning too fast for the motor. You need to put more uh, load on the motor. So to do that, you go up in prop size. So example, most small engines govern out at 3,800 RPMs. So this that's governing out. So with this you need to go up in prop size. So if you're running a 1436 John boat you would most likely have a 13 horsepower engine and you'd be running an eight and a half inch prop. Now this is the normal setup. Most people here will be right at this 3800 RPMs. But let's say that you are at 3800 RPMs with this setup and you want to get more speed. So you go up in prop size. So at this same boat you move to a 9 inch prop. With my boat, I can get up to about 3760. And I reach speeds of 23 miles per hour. But it's tough to handle. All right? So with a 9-inch prop, you're over-propping it, but you are getting a faster speed. With this, I normally get about 18, and it's easy to handle. So one way to go about this is you have the 9-inch prop. It may be too tough to handle, but at 20 miles per hour, I'm at 2,800 RPM. and it's easy to handle. But at 2800 RPM, I'm sort of lugging the motor, so it's not as efficient, 
but you can do this and I do do it for long trips. So if I'm going through weeds and stuff, I'll use the weedless prop and I get the same 18, but I, but I also go up to 19 with the weedless miles per hour. But if I'm going a long distance and I want to cover more ground faster, then I'll put on this nine inch and I'll lug it at 2,800 RPMs and I'll get 20 miles per hour and it'll be easy to handle. With this 13 horsepower and an eight and a half inch prop, it's easy to handle. The weedless is actually even easier and you have less vibration. So with all this, this is if the RPMs are too high, you need to go up to prop size. Now, if RPMs are too low, So, if your RPMs are, say, 3,200. 3,200 RPMs, you're governed out at 3,800. So you still have a difference of 600 RPMs. So with this, this might be because maybe you're hauling a heavier load. In most cases, that's what the, the thing is. But as you know, it's the opposite of this scenario over here. So RPMs are too low, you're gonna go down in prop size. So you're governed out at 38. That's your target, your target RPMs. 3200 RPMs, you wanna get up to 38, you need to gain 600 RPMs, say you're running an eight and a half inch prop. So your next step would be to go, you need to go down in prop size. So we're gonna go to an eight inch prop. For an eight inch prop, that may get you to 3600 RPMs. Say you really just wanna get up to that 38 and it's really bothering you maybe an 8 inch prop may get you 16 miles per hour where the 8.5 may have been getting you 14 miles per hour so it wouldn't hurt to go down to the 7.5 inch prop this will get you to that 38 100 rpms and with the speed I haven't tested this yet, so this is one thing I'd like to do further down the road and this may be something that you find in the comments down below. So with this, you may get a higher miles per hour, or with it being close to that governing out and it being a smaller prop, you may actually go down in miles per hour. So this is where you need to test it out for your specific boat. So the general guideline, as I'm trying to explain here. If you are governing out your engine and you want more speed, you need to put a bigger prop on. If you're lugging your engine, then it may be more beneficial to go down to a smaller prop size and your engine will run more efficiently. If you run faster with that same bigger prop and you're still lugging, then that may be better for you. But um, just as I've been doing my research, that seems to be the rule of thumb. If you're governing out, get a bigger prop. If your RPMs are too low, go down in prop size. So this is something new that I just found out was Swamp Runner actually makes a um, some type of a performance prop. They call it their hurricane prop. This is their hurricane prop. This is a standard prop, right? So this standard prop, the pitch is a lot smaller. It's it's less in pitch, okay? Then compare it to the Hurricane. Same size diameter, right? Same size diameter. But just a lot more pitch to it. So let's move this. Here's your pitch. So 
you do have a lot more prop there. Now, as I explained here, where I'm running the nine inch prop and I still have, I'm still at that 3800, I'm just under it, so this is the perfect prop for this, but it's too tough to handle. It's too tough to handle because I'm over propping it at nine inches. Eight and a half seems to be the sweet spot. The weedless is an 8.75 and I can run that too, so you may be able to go up to 8.75, but their standard props only go to eight and a half. Now, this is where the hurricane comes in because the eight and a half hurricane prop has more pitch, but it's the same diameter. So you should still get this easy handling, but you should go up in speed because you have more prop biting the water and going. Now this does put um, more stress on the engine, but you should still read your RPMs and see where you're at. So with your eight and a half inch prop, when I put it on my 13 horsepower engine, I got 20 to 22 miles per hour easy handling. When I was testing this, I was having fuel problems where I was using ethanol free fuel and stable. The engine didn't seem to want to, the pitch of it didn't sound right. So I need to go out again and retest it. But even on that bad fuel, I was running 20 to 22 miles per hour with the Hurricane prop. There are a few other people who have posted this on Facebook and they seem to really like it too. Now this prop isn't on Swamp Runner's website, but you can give them a call and ask to get it. You just gotta know what it's called and it's the Hurricane. Um, they do have an eight inch and eight and a half on my 1436, 13 horsepower engine, Predator, stock, nothing done to it, a medium kit. I can run an eight and a half inch and it runs good. Um, now this is just my boat. It depends if your boat's lighter or heavier it will run completely different. So if you're running eight and a half now and you're governing out, then you may be able to push this eight and a half hurricane. So with a prop, think of it as a screw in the water. It needs to make one evolution, right? So as it's making that one revolution, it's going through the water, say one foot. With this, with the hurricane prop having more pitch to it, that one turn, will get you, so to say, two feet further in the water with the same revolutions per minute, your RPMs. So in theory, this will travel a lot further than your standard prop. And with it covering more ground like that, that's what's gonna get you your speed and cover a longer distance faster. So think of it as a screw in the water. There's two things you can really change or um, the main things that people go after. You either change the pitch of your prop or you try to make it spin faster. Now with these engines they're reliable at 3800, 4000, somewhere in there. You can get them specced out and get them really pushing. I think the Vegas motors are going around six or seven thousand RPMs but um, those tie racers who run the two strokes, those are floating anywhere between 10 and 12,000 RPMs, almost like a jet ski motor. So to get speed, you either need a big pitch or, or and, I mean, you can have the two together, or you need your engine to spin faster. If your engine spin faster and you have a bigger pitch prop, then you're gonna be booking it, but you need an engine that'll spin that fast. For most people, you're governed out at about 3,800, 4,000 RPMs, and the way that I'm understanding it is the standard props are good for your everyday use, for hauling things, anything of that nature. Your hurricane props, I don't know how weedless it is, I just ran it one time, it's meant for speed, it's not meant for... Um, traversing stumps and everything like that. It does seem like a little bit thicker of a prop, but um, I haven't tested it much. It does go faster than the standard prop, but if you want weedless, go with the weedless prop. 
they have an eight and a half and a six and a half weedless. And just for those who are looking into long tails and haven't bought one yet, a 12 foot 32 or even a 10 32, you can put a 6.5 horsepower, normally Predator, they're the cheapest, most reliable, they've gotten better. Six and a half horsepower with a small kit. A 12.36 and a 14.36, you'll do a 13 horsepower. That'll be your medium kit. You can get a 16 or an 18 horsepower. It's a V-twin Briggs. That can fit on a 1436, 1442, um, anything else. I mean, these engines are pretty good, but you can do that on a 1436, any 14 foot boat, you can probably do a 16 foot too. Um, I believe those are medium kit. Um, once you get above this, once you start getting into that, I think it's a 1542, I mean a 16 horsepower will fit that just fine. Um, but anything, how oh, should we put this? 1542 and more. That's normally that 22 horsepower Predator V-twin. That'll be your large kit. With the six and a half horsepower, you're going to be running a six inch or six and a half. If you're in a really light boat, you could probably do a seven and a uh, seven inch. Thirteen, you're going to be getting an eight and an eight and a half. Most people run the eight and a half. If you have a heavy load, most people go with the eight. Once you get into this V-twin, this is a little special beast. I'd like to. This would be my perfect setup for my current John boat. I'd want a 1436 matched with a 16 or 18 V-twin. Briggs. Uh, should be a medium kit, but you should be running that 9 inch prop, I think. That Hurricane prop may be the best for it. So with this, you're getting the same as that, but you may also be able to get the props that you're going to run with the large kit. Large kit, you got a 9 inch or a 9.5 inch. Uh, don't know much about this. There's a lot of guys on... Um, on YouTube with the 1542 and the 22 horsepower Predator. Um, right now, this right here, that's my game. That's what I know. And um, once I can get the money and have reason to do it, I'll go to the 16 or the 18 horsepower V twin Briggs. It's a two cylinder, so it's a lot smoother and it should run better. Um, also more reliable and it has a few other benef uh, benefits as like having the alternator and uh, things of that nature. I do have electric start on the engine that I do have but I just don't have it hooked up. So this is like a quick crash course into how to size a prop and a little extra. So if you liked it give it a thumbs up. Visit the comments down below. Hopefully those comments will blow up You'll see everybody's opinion on what they run, the speeds they get. I encourage you, please, put what you run down in the comments down below. And if you're really into long tails or you want to help others out, join the long tail group. It's Long Tail Mud Motors. Uh, it's a group. I do have the page and the group. You can join either one. But right now the group is going pretty quick. Um, but go there. That's where you can find your information. You can ask questions. Um, it's a good community that's not biased based on the mud motor that you have and which one you're gonna get. But I try to keep it to long tail mud motors. Doesn't matter if it's Thai or American, um, just long tail mud motors. I do have a, um, I think it's 
um, Battle of the TLT mud motors, Battle of the Tai Longtail mud motors, and I try to keep that strictly for Tai Longtails, like the Swamp Runner, the Mud Skipper, and the Beaver. Um, that's mainly the Tai Longtails, but Longtail mud motors is Tai Longtails, American Longtails, really anything mud motors, just not too many service drives. So keep it there. That's where you can find your information. And uh, if you like this idea of the having the paper and me writing stuff out, let me know. I'd appreciate it. So make sure to subscribe. Try to blow this channel up. And uh, if you like the video, please like. And uh, we'll see you next weekend. Thank you for watching. This is JT Gatoring.